we need to be active on the market, be in the front of everyone all the time, because it can be certainly three times more than what it is now to reach our peers. Everyone always tells me they're undervalued compared to their peers. You need to pick your peers more carefully or you need to do something about it. Hello, welcome to Crux Investor. First of all, thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. That helps us to understand if this is the sort of company that you'd like us to spend our time, money, and effort on for you. You can also leave your comments below to uh, help us with the sorts of questions you think we should be asking, how you think we're doing, and of course, what you think of the company. You can also catch this as a podcast, a transcription, and an article on cruxinvestor.com. And of course, for our Crux Investor Club members, you get early access to this video. And if you haven't already done so, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, for more videos like this, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Pierre Lavelle, who is the CEO of Deep South Resources. They've, they're on the CSXV, but they've got a large copper asset in Namibia, way down in the south. Um, copper prices have moved uh, since we last spoke to them back in May. Um, they were short of cash then. I think they're still short of cash now, trying to... Uh, show the market that they will be able to raise capital, quite a bit of capital to get this thing into production. So will this be timely for him because copper's on the up? Do they have the skill sets necessary to move this thing forward? He answers those questions. Also take a look at the description below some of the other topics discussed. Uh, anything interesting in particular, click on the number beside the topic. That's called a timestamp. I'll jump you to that part of the video, but otherwise enjoy what Pierre has to say. Pierre, how are you doing, sir? Very good, and you? Very good, not bad. Long week, mm -hmm. I'm ready. I'm ready for the weekend. Yes, pretty soon now. It's, uh, I still have some hours to go, but uh, you yeah, do. I'm ready. You do, good. Mm -hmm. I like your shirt, by the way. I want to say that publicly. It's a nice shirt. I have shirt envy. Uh, right, for people uh, new to this story, why don't we do the usual one minute overview of the business, then we're going to pick it up because there's a lot of new news. Uh, Deep South is, is certainly uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, investment potential because it's uh, not very often you see a very large project like this in a junior exploration and development company. So Deep South holds the Hyde Copper project in the south of Namibia, which is a large copper porphyry low grade. Uh, we have 66,000 meters of drilling on it. We have already a 43101 uh, resource estimation that shows over 5 billion pounds of, the cup in, of copper in the ground. Uh, we know we can expand that tonnage substantially, and uh, so it, it can become bigger. Uh, we have recently also worked on uh, uh, bioassisted leaching, meteorological tests that have proven that this technology works very well with the ore at Hyde. It's not a new technology, it's just well adapted to the ore we have, and uh, that permits to uh, do a PEA with uh, uh, very low capex, low opex, low stripping ratio, so it gives extremely robust, robust economics at two dollar fifty per pound of copper. But we know that we're now in uh, uh, higher than that, so the economics are just looking uh, looking better. Okay. So we know also we can improve the grade uh, in targeting the uh, high grade section. So uh, that's in a nutshell. That's who we are. And one of the things is that we have a very highly experienced team that is highly capable to develop a project like this. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I want to pick up on where we left off. We spoke two months ago, just in May, okay? And people yes. should look at that interview for the business plan and understand the experience of the team and all of that kind of stuff that they, they should know. But today we're gonna, gonna skip forward a bit. Um, and before we get onto the PEA, and what, what you think you have with the PEA numbers, I need to talk numbers with you. When we spoke last time, you're 3 million market cap, you're about 10 million now, share price has more than doubled, um, and it's been even higher, um, but you're still very small, okay? I need to yes. understand, do you have the money, do you have the capability of getting the money to move this forward? Because when we spoke, you had $200,000 left. I know you're on a tight ship, but, Talk to me about the numbers, because uh, you've had conversations with tech, have you not? Uh, yes, the, uh, but tech is a shareholder. Of course, it's our largest shareholder. And uh, there's a couple of things that have happened with them. The, uh, they're still supporting us uh, greatly. And uh, we owed them money for when we did the original transaction to acquire the overall package. 
and uh, they decided to convert this uh, this uh, debt into shares. So their shareholding, which is 23 percent at the moment, will become 27 percent soon. As soon as the exchange approved the deal, we don't see any problem. It should happen early next week. Uh, we add also a convertible debenture with them that was uh, arriving to maturity in August this year, uh, convertible at 14 cents. Now we have extended that convert the that uh, convertible debenture to August two two thousand twenty one, and the uh, conversion price will be eleven and a half cents. So. Uh, in our view, and for tech also, it's a, a sign of support. They like what we're doing. They're not ready at this point in time to really you know, jump into that project again. Uh, but they want to see it uh, evolving, and they want to see where we can uh, bring it. So uh, that's the situation with tech. So uh, we, okay. we still have the support of tech. OK, which is obviously a good shareholder to have. But basically, they've kind of kicked the can down the road with regards to the convert. You're still going to have to deal with it this time next year or before yeah. or before. Um, yes. And they've done a debt for equity swap uh, again. Tiny bit dilutory, but but inconsequential in the scheme of things. It was, it was a known, known debt thing. But let's 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 keep going on the finance. You're going to need money. You're two hundred thousand bucks two months ago. What are you going to do about raising capital to actually be able to, to be able to do anything on the basis of the uh, the PEA results which were uh, as you know you know pretty good it's uh, uh, quite amazing at this point in time uh, we already we will start early next week a financing uh, which will raise up to two million dollars and with that we will start drilling in the high grade section of the deposit and we believe that on the back of good result and that uh, uh, section, we will be able to add value and raise money again on the back of that to carry on next step of the development, which is... I mean, two, two million is not a lot of money, but is it enough? No, it's not a lot. It's enough to do what we need to do to uh, uh, go to the next step, okay? It's uh, because one thing, there, there, there was three challenges with this project. The first one is, yes, it's a very large project, but it was low grade. And the idea was, can we extract the metal at profit with a, a low capex, low opex operation? We chosen to go with uh, 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 bioassisted technology because it's a robust technology existing, mainly used by majors in Chile. And uh, we tested it. It was tested on the past with very high recoveries. So we tested it again and we showed recoveries up to 95%. Uh, so the first point is, yes, we have a technology to extract the, uh, the, uh, the metal at low capex and low opex. Now, can we give a, a decent return? So that was the object of the updated PEA. So that was the second challenge. So the second challenge now is covered because we know we can turn out very robust economics. Uh, uh, and uh, now the third challenge is, can we improve the grade? And that's what we will do in drilling in the I grade section. And we're very confident with the extension we already have in that area that we will come out with good results and that we will be able to show that the grade of the project was underestimated. Okay. So on the back of all of this, then we have covered the three challenges we had to cover to change the perception over that deposit and add value. And then from that point, attracting more financing also attracting some potential major partners or strategic investor and so on. Okay, maybe let's talk about the PEA numbers now, yeah. if you don't mind, because I do want to get onto the bioassisted leaching, what it actually means. I, I know it's not a new technology, but I want I want to understand it. I think people want to understand this. So, give yeah. me give me the headline numbers around the PEA. The uh, uh, the base case that we have chosen is uh, an operation at twenty million tons per annum throughput. Uh, that turns out to uh, deliver uh, uh, 50, um, 35,000 uh, ton of copper cathodes per year and 50,000 tons of, uh, of uh, um, copper sulfate, sorry. <laughs> and uh, we do that at a capex of $340 million US. The NPV is $611 million US. And uh, with, a, with an operation cost per pound at one forty one, one dollar forty one, which is pretty low. It's not the lowest in the average of the overall project, but it's at the you know in, in the, the first quartile. 
uh, and the uh, the NP the uh, IRR after tax is 22.7 percent. Now that was based on two dollar fifty per pound of copper. At the time we were doing that, even the copper was lower than that. So we have in the PEA uh, a sensitivity analysis starting at two dollars, two dollars twenty five, two fifty, two eighty five, and three dollars, and even at two dollars. Uh, uh, per pound of copper, we're still making money. I, I agree that we don't give a very high return, but at least we're still in, you know, making money. So it means that the project is very robust, uh, no matter what, no matter what, what will happen with the price of copper. Now the price of copper is near three dollars. So the all the numbers are, of course, improved. And when you look at the three dollar mark, we have a, 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 a NPV that is over nine hundred million US. We have a uh, an after-tax IRR over 30%, so it starts to be a very serious number there. Yeah, there's, there's after-tax numbers you're giving as well at $3. Um, that's by the page six of your presentation, if anyone wants to look at that. Yeah. Okay, so I understand some of the, the economics. It, it is, these are big numbers. You're a small company. You're going to yeah. need to, um, obviously, you're going to focus on this high-grade central core first because that sh the numbers will look better. Are those numbers going to look att attractive enough to raise the money that you're going to need, probably from a strategic partner, probably from someone who really needs copper in this uh, in this environment? Uh, we think so. It's uh, there's already some people looking at it, and most of them are looking to see what we will you know give as as uh, drilling results. Uh, and we're confident we will be able to attract the money that that's needed to develop that project, whether it's uh, financing in Deep South, whether it's financing the project through strategic partner or takeover, or you know, there, there's a lot of ways that 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 can it can evolve in different ways. Uh, but we're certain that we uh, we will give some. You know, we're pretty excited with the results. We we think we uh, will be able to bring to the table. And we know that the grade has been underestimated in the past. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, all the majors that went on the project before were hungry for tonnage. So they were using a grid of drilling of space by 150 meters. Uh, we know now that most of the structure that are controlling the, uh, the high grade pods are vertical or tend to be vertical. So when you s drill, uh, space by 150 meter and vertical, you miss a lot of the uh, high grade pots. When we drill in angle, suddenly we realize that there's a lot of high grade pots that were not seen before that exist. You know? So the idea is to infill drill it because when we have a tighter spacing, we get a lot better grades and to do it in angle also to cross these structures. So for us, uh, there's a very good chance that first we will develop a measured resource on that high grade section, which is 140 million ton. It's it's pretty decent size, and it will at the same time, which will be quite higher grade than what we see in the average of the deposit. And at the same time, it will have an influence on the overall, uh, on the the average grade of the overall deposit. Okay, tech. They've seen now. Well, will be if the if the exchange approves at 27 percent shareholder. Are they going to help facilitate you raising 340 million bucks capex when you get to that point? Do they follow their money, or is this just a leg <laughs> legacy issue for them? And what, what does that conversation look like? Potentially, yes, but at this point in time, I cannot, uh, I cannot anticipate anything from their side. Okay. Uh, the, you know, by the time we will get there, uh, there's you know water that will flow in the river. It's uh, a couple of years from now, so it's uh, and these companies have a tendency to you know things can change. Today they say something, and uh, in the next six months things will be different for many reasons. So it's uh, uh, we don't count on that. Okay? okay, we we know that they're there, they're supportive, it's fine, but we don't count on anyone for the future. Okay, so that says to me you've had no conversations to date about that, either because it's too early to to do so, or they're not interested. We don't know. I don't know. We had some conversation. They're still very interested in the deposit. They're still interested in the geology of the deposit. That's the thing. It's uh, uh, and they like the way that we want to develop it. Uh, but at this point in time, because where they are in their own company with their own project and development, they're, they're just not ready to make any commitment to a project in Africa because that's completely out of their turf. Okay. 
so, so, uh, but but they still follow it and they like it. Okay, so you go and raise some money. There's two million bucks. Um, talk to me about exactly what you're going to do with that. You say it's enough to do what you need to do. So what do you need to do? Do you think? And to what end? Because there's drilling for geology and there's drilling for the market. Okay. Yes. So you've got two outcomes there which you what are you going to focus on drill because you want to understand the geology better or are you going to actually do something which makes like the market because again a 10 million market cap you, you need to do that uh, we will do both because it's very important to understand better the geology if we want to add value at one point in time that will have to be based on geology uh, but we know that where we will drill and what we have to do to understand better the geology will also at the same time have the effect we want to see in the market because it's uh, when, you dry, when you drill in the higher grade section, no matter what, you will get higher grade, you will get long extension with very good grade compared to what we see in the, in the uh, average at the moment. So it will have the effect on the market that we Hopefully, that uh, it will have the effect on the market we're looking for. Do you feel you understand the market well enough to kind of bring this forward? Because you know, two million bucks at a ten million market cap—that's a that's a big, that's a lot of money. That's expensive money uh, at this point, well, right? Yes, we, <laughs> we understand that, that very well, and that's why there's there's a couple of things we need to do to address that situation correctly. Okay. The, uh, uh, the main point is this. First of all, is that it's a pretty tightly held company, so we need to dilute that a little bit better, and we need to attract a lot more action in the market, more liquidity to the market. And that's something that we're doing at the moment uh, in, in moving forward with different entities that will help us in attracting more retail action. Okay? Uh, the other thing is that we are, you know, we're completely, uh, uh, we're an exploration company. We're a very good exploration team with a lot of uh, experience. And we understand fairly well at this, point, at this point in time that our first job is not necessarily to dream that we will become the next big my, uh, copper mining company. is to make sure that we will do what has to be done to attract the right player to put that in production. Not necessarily us. Okay. We have the expertise to do that, but we don't have the financial resources at the moment to think like this. Okay. okay. So we need to be active on the market, be in the front of everyone all the time, because it's a very undervalued situation no matter what. It can be certainly three times more than what it is now to reach our peers. So we're pretty undervalued compared to our peers. So we need to address that. And that's what we have started to do recently. And you see it, the market reacts a lot better Liquidity is better. I'm not talking necessarily only price, but I'm talking liquidity. It's important. It trades better. So uh, uh, that's very important. So we're, we're doing the action we need to do to, to address that situation. Okay. Every, everyone always tells me they're undervalued compared to their peers. You need to pick your peers more carefully or you need to do something about it because uh, you know, the question was, what do you do with two million bucks per site? Tell me what you're going to do with the first half a million, then, then the next half a million, then the next half a million. And what do you think that information is going to allow you to do? What's it going to tell the people at home about the ability of this company to move forward at the kind of pace with the kind of results that you expect? The, uh, uh, the money we will raise, we start raising next week. First, we already have some commitments in place. So it's going to, you know, we have a lead order that will help starting on the, the right foot. And uh, we're looking at raising up to $2 million. But the first eight hundred to $900,000 will enable to start the drilling in the, because the, the center area is, is in three different pits. Okay? And one of the pit is the main one that we want to attack. And we will do about, 3,500 to four, uh, 5,000 uh, meters of drilling in that specific area with the first bunch of money we have. The balance of the money, when we, you know, if we can get more than that $800,000, $900,000, then we'll serve to drill in the two other pits, pits number two and number three. Now, the type of, of results that we had in the past on this, on, in that specific area are 150 meter at 0.68%. Uh, 100 meter at 0.81 percent, another uh, 70 meter at one, at 9.90 something percent. There are some 30 meters over up to 1.25 percent. So we're talking about 
serious grade here compared to the 0.31% average in the, uh, so, so we are confident on the back of results of like this. I'm not saying we will have all, uh, all the drilling results will be like this, but we will have some like this. That's for sure, because we already have drilling in that, those area that, that shows that. Uh, so we're confident on the, on the basis of that, that we can add value, have a better market cap again, and then go to next step, raise more money to do more drilling, raise more money to do more metallurgical work, and start in the design engineering for a feasibility step. Okay, so talk, talk to me about the area outside of this high grade core, because you're gonna, those are good grades, those are good grades, but yes. you, do you have, so what was the, what, what sort of scale are we talking about there, just so I understand? The, the overall deposit at the moment is 850 million ton, and the center of the deposit that we will focus on first is 140 million ton. Okay. Right. So it's about what one sixth of the overall deposit. Now that deposit is open ended at surface and, and at depth. So at the end of the day, it will be probably nearer 1.5 to 2 billion tons. But at the moment, this is not what we want to address. So the idea here is to show that with 140 million ton at better grades, we have uh, uh, better economics because if we have a uh, because at the moment the PA is based on 0.31 percent copper. If we have a let's say an average of 0.45 percent copper in that area, just as an example, uh, the economics will grow up quite a lot. So what it shows is that you have a very good starting pit to mine for six, seven, eight years, seven or eight years, and then. From that point, you're at full profit, so mining lower grade in the balance of the deposit is not the same thing anymore. You know? So that's why the center of the deposit is very important, uh, because that will enable to render the rest of the deposit economic at lower grade. But it's possible that applying the same geology research we've done in the past two years to the rest of the deposit, we will find more high-grade pods in the rest of the deposit. There's a huge possibility for that. It seems the more desirous outcome because the reality is you mine a high grade core, you then spend the money you make on that to then mine the rest of the, 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 the you know, the ore body, in which case, you know, it's the, it's the old adage where mining, mining companies keep plowing the money back into the ground and kind of forget to reward shareholders. They, you yeah. know, that, it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult uh, conundrum that you've got um, to prove out here. Um, I mean, what, what's your sense of how you go about doing it? Do you believe that mining out the core uh, is the right solution or is it just to actually work out what the total size and opportunity or the scale of this resource and let someone um, else do it? Yes, but yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to let someone else do it. As I said, you know, it's, mm. not the, 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 it's not the goal of the company at the moment to be the one that will put that in production. Uh, the, uh, as I said, we have some people on board that can do that because they have done it before on very sizable projects. But the way we look at it now is that the, the, uh, uh, when we start one way or the other, being a major or being a small company, when they will start mining, it will start mining in the higher grade uh, pod in order to uh, uh, make the payback as soon as possible. So that's, that's always the way that companies will do it. Uh, but it depends also on the, the grade of the balance of the deposit. If the grade of the balance of the deposit in doing this becomes too, too low, then we kill a little bit the resource. So there are going to be a, a need for mine management to make sure that the resource is properly managed or the reserve at that time properly managed to make sure in in mining the I-grade pod, we don't kill the rest of the deposit. That there will be a trade-off at some point in time, most probably. Uh, so, but we know we can increase the tonnage, and because of what we found in the higher-grade section, uh, and because of some drilling that gone down to 800 meters, showing very high-grade pods also between 300 and 500 meters, we know it exists somewhere else. So, our job also in the next two years will be to find more of these high-grade pods. Okay. Uh, on the deposit. If we succeed with that, then it changed the picture drastically. Okay. Tell me about bio-assisted leaching. Yes. Does it work? Uh, the, uh, uh, 
basics of that, it's pretty simple. It's uh, uh, leaching, as you, as you may know, is uh, you pile rock in stacks and you pour sulfuric acid over the rocks and the sulfuric acid will drip down to the bottom of the stack and will create a liquor in which you have a concentrate of copper. Then we will go to solvent extraction to extract the copper from there and go to SXCW to create the, the cathodes. The only difference with the bioassisted leaching is that we add a mix of bacteria in the sulfuric acid that will help the uh, uh, that will uh, uh, make that the uh, sulfide in the in the rock will be oxidized by the bacteria and then will leach faster, because many people think that uh, uh, you can uh, leach oxide easily, but it's difficult to leach sulfides. It's not the case. Sulfides are leaching. It's just that it takes too long, and uh, the bacteria's action. What it does is that it reduces the time of leaching substantially, making to make it. Uh, uh, viable economically speaking. Uh, the fact that you use, we use bacteria, it's not a novelty in the sense that when they discovered bioassisted leaching in the 80s, they just realized that this was a natural action. It was happening in stockpiles beside the, uh, the mine. They were seeing that after rain, many, many years of rain, that thing was leaching. So they were not understanding exactly why. So in making a lot of research, they realized that there was a bacterial action that was creating that. And uh, then they have started to apply that on a more you know, a scientific and commercial way. And the idea into that is to have the right uh, mineralogy to address that and also the uh, right component around your, your, your deposit. And uh, as an example, in the case of, of Hyde, the mineralogy is extremely simple. It's 98.5% charcoal pyrite. That's where you get the copper. That's it. There is no deleterious element. There's just a little bit of molybdenum. There's no, really no gold. There's nothing else. You know? So you just focus on extracting one uh, mineral and one metal. So being like this, it helps the uh, uh, bacterial action and there's nothing to come in conflict, in conflict with this action. So that's why it works well. It's just because the mineralogy is very simple. Otherwise, it could be complex and then it could turn out that it does not work so well. Uh, Cadelco is using this on their Redomero Tomic mine in Chile since 2014 and uh, successfully and uh, that's, they do it on the exact same mineralogy than we have. And uh, that's the reason why they're successful. Many other companies are using this since the, uh, since the 80s and 90s uh, in Chile, but on different applications. Some are using it on stockpiles. Some are using it on, uh, only on oxide. Some are using it only on transition. So, you know, it, it depends. But uh, on an exact similar situation than ours, it's where the mirror damage with the alcohol. Okay. Hey, look, look, Pierre, I mean, thanks for the catch up. I know we only spoke a couple of months ago, but, but just the, because of the numbers of the PEA that you put out and sort of the market has reacted a little bit to the story. We kind of wanted to come back to you and understand how yeah. you're progressing. I suspect the thing that they're going to want to see next is if you raise this, raise this money, you know, how expensive is it going to be? And what are you going to do with it? And what is the first bit of news that you're, that you're chasing? with the drill bit uh, and when will that be? We will raise that money and uh, we will get start drilling at some point and we're confident we will get, get a very good result. So if all of this takes in place correctly, like I say, we're confident, uh, I would say that in the next, before the end of the year, there will be uh, good results enough to go to next step, to figure out what, what will be next step.